My name is Lydia Magallanes and I'm with Wildcats Media and as the 10th anniversary of 9-11 approaches us, we actually had the opportunity to talk to a couple of students about their experiences. First, we talked to Andrew DeFour, the senior captain of the debate team, and he tells us how he remembers that his uncle was actually a first responder to Ground Zero. He was there within a, f a few days, if I remember. He was there pretty soon after. He was still smoking when he went. He described the devastation. It was it was pretty awful. Like I can't even I can't even describe it the the way he did because it was just so much. Because and, and he said something I didn't know that there was actually a giant hole in the ground where the buildings used to be. So it's like I like I imagine like probably a lot of people that there's a giant pile of rubble there for you to see. But right. No, it's a giant ten story deep hole in the ground. Well, one for each building where they used to be. And they, because he was there so soon, he had to go back a lot of times to New York for some testing for his bestest and some chemical spills they had at the time and a lot of problems. And they were actually really worried that he'd get sick. Luckily, my uncle never got sick. There's a lot of people that did get sick, the people that were there a few days afterwards. Because, like, the problems of it really did last for longer than just the attack itself. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to talk to Ron So, a member of the men's soccer team who was actually living in South Korea at the time of the attacks. At the day of September 11th, I was in a cousin's house, and I was too, I was really young. I mean, I, I was young, yes. so I couldn't imagine what happened there, because I saw I watched it a little. Uh, I watched it, uh, the terror terror terrorist the, attack. Yeah, terrorist attack, you know, through a little tiny TV. Uh huh. So. Um, just it was a big issue because there was a uh, Koreans too. And finally, we talked to Vinny Torres, also a member of the men's soccer team, who actually grew up on Long Island, about an hour away from New York City, and tells us what it was like being in school at the time of the attacks. When I went home, my mom was freaking out because my dad was working in the city because he's an, like an electrician, right, and right. Uh, he. Um, was actually at the World Trade Center two days before that happened, uh -huh. so my mom was freaking out that maybe he, could, he was there at that time and something happened and cell phones weren't that good, like the reception wasn't the best back then. So my mom was freaking out. She also had to call my aunt because my uncle works there and sometimes my aunt works in the city because they're like 10 minutes away from the city. Right. So my mom was like freaking out and like all the neighbors, everybody was calling everybody to make sure to see what happened because a lot of families knew people that were in the towers. Right. And so uh, when you finally did go back to school, what was that like? When we went back to school, it everything was, to it was like totally different because people were like grieving over a lot because whether you knew somebody or someone in your family knew somebody somehow you were related to somebody in the attack uh, it was really sad because it's hard to see some of your friends or people you know that like cry or, like are really hurting because they lost their dad or they lost their mom in the towers or their dad was trying a firefighter trying to save someone's life and then he ended up losing his and it's just really sad you know uh, our school had to do a lot of uh, moment of silences and every day before classes we would do uh, like a moment of silence and everybody would you know to pray for the love the ones that were lost in the towers so whether you were living in Louisiana New York or even South Korea everybody will always remember 9-11 with Wildcats Media I'm Lydia Magallanes